Now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim, so he couldn't see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. <laughs> and Samuel said, here I am. And he ran to Eli saying, here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, ah, I did not call. Lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called again a third time. And Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli realized it was the Lord calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down. If the Lord calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Hmm? So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, speak for, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second scripture lesson comes from John's gospel, the first chapter, verses 41, 43 through 51. Listen for God's word as we are gathered this day. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and all the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked Jesus, Where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, 
I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, send your Holy Spirit to open our ears, open our hearts, open our minds, that we might hear you speaking to us this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. As a young child, I was enchanted when my father read fairy tales out loud. Once upon a time. Just these four simple words, once upon a time, were a captivating invitation. I really wanted to know what would happen next. I mean, is there a troll lurking under the bridge? And would a dragon swoop down out of the sky? And of course, at the end, does everyone live happily ever after? Today, we have heard two biblical stories, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. And thanks to Kathy Smedley's uh, remarkable gifts and her generosity in sharing them, the story of Eli and Samuel has been shared through biblical storytelling. I mean, this almost comical narrative of, of young Samuel uh, when he encounters God for the very first time is what Kathy shared. And this happens when the word of the Lord seems rare and visions are not widespread. So Samuel does not know God yet. Three times God calls Samuel, Samuel, and each time Eli runs to the elderly priest, assuming Eli is the one calling. Eventually, after one too many nighttime interruptions, Eli realizes it is God speaking. And with insight gleaned from years of experience, Eli instructs Samuel to respond, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so Samuel receives a vision of his future vocation. In John's Gospel, we learn of another first encounter. Philip, excited about meeting Jesus, enthusiastically tells Nathanael that they have found the one about whom Moses and all the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph of Nazareth. Nathanael responds, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, after all, Nazareth is a small, insignificant village in Galilee, certainly not an appropriate hometown for the Messiah. Not to be dissuaded, Philip invites Nathanael to come and see. You have to meet Jesus. And during their encounter, Jesus sees who Nathanael is, looks into his heart, knows what he needs. And in dramatic response, Nathanael moves from ignorance to knowledge, from skepticism to confession, from doubt to faith. When Nathanael looks beyond his first impressions of Jesus, he is able to see Jesus for who he truly is, the Son of God. Before we judge Nathanael too harshly, perhaps you and I should reflect on the assessments we make based on our first impressions 
or also the ingrained prejudice that we sometimes harbor. I mean, it happens all too often. Let me share a more recent story with you. Politician and voting rights activist Stacey Abrams graduated from high school in 1991 as valedictorian. And in Georgia, valedictorians are invited to meet the governor. But Stacy's family was poor and had no car. So Stacy and her parents traveled by bus to the governor's mansion to attend that special recognition. Arriving in front of those imposing gates of the governor's mansion, the Abrams family got off the bus and walked across the street. And with her invitation in hand, Stacy presented herself to the guard. The guard looked at Stacy, looked at her parents, and said, you don't belong here. This is a private event. Stacy's father proudly stated, this is my daughter, Stacy. She is her high school's valedictorian. Instead of consulting the invitation list in his hand, the guard looked at the departing bus. In his mind, the bus told the story about who should and who should not meet the governor. Perhaps Stacy's dark skin color prompted the guard to reiterate disdainfully, I told you, you do not belong here. This is a private event. Only after strong words from her parents did the guard consult the list and find Stacy's name. As Stacy recounts this story, she remembers little about seeing the governor or meeting all the other valedictorians. The only clear memory in her mind of that day is of a man standing in front of the most powerful place in Georgia, looking at her and saying she did not belong. However, Stacy did receive a vision of her future vocation. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can a poor black girl be valedictorian? The disheartening reality is all too often we not only think, but we act upon flawed and dismissive beliefs about others. The good news is God continues to speak to us in ways that are transformational. We may be slow, doubtful, and hard of hearing at times, but God keeps speaking. As we read stories from the Bible, we hear the ongoing conversation of God with God's people. We belong to God as beloved children. And like Samuel and Nathaniel, God will not leave us as we are. Instead, God promises to call and to shepherd us into what we can become. While God continues, while God communicates with Samuel in nighttime utterances, God comes to the early disciples in the actual person of Jesus. In Jesus, God's word took on flesh and moved into the neighborhood. Jesus is God's creative, life-giving word calling us beyond our first impressions to come and see. Come and see. Follow Jesus Christ 
and see God's mighty acts in and for the world. God is not finished telling God's story. And thankfully, our stories are intricately woven into God's story. So we may ask, can anything good come out of the recent global pandemic, political unrest, racial turmoil, and an economic crisis? But we also trust. We trust in God's ability to restore, renew, and resurrect. Be assured and take heart because there is no circumstance, time, place, or situation that is beyond God's ability to transform and redeem. Nothing, nothing will deter God from his determination to be with us and for us. Once upon a time, not so very long ago, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, he shared his vision. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Tomorrow, we celebrate the legacy of Reverend King. May it be an invitation to you and to me to honor King's dream by how we live our lives. With hope and with great expectancy, may we seek to participate in God's larger salvation story in ways that more fully establish the justice, peace, and freedom for all. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. May it be so. Amen.